What's going on, everyone? So yesterday, the Lakers suffered another loss to the Chicago Bulls this time on the road. They have been abysmal on the road. Uh, and Darvin Ham was number one trending for a while in the sports department. Uh, same thing with Zach Levine, as well as Gabe Vincent and D'Angelo Russell. Uh, diving into the actual game, um, and just this team as a whole. I mean, this team is in absolute shambles, right? They can't score the basketball. They're seventh in defense. They've been playing really good defense this year, right? And they can't have their offense keep up with the defensive side of things. The Lakers just, I mean, again, they score 108 points against the Chicago Bulls. The Chicago Bulls aren't this, like, great elite defensive team. They've been better defensively lately. Over the last, like, handful of games or so, they're still ranked 15th in that time, right? They're, like, 22nd in the league overall. So there's no reason that the Lakers should not be able to score the basketball with consistency. I mean, to start this game, the Lakers had 14 points, and all 14 points came from LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Literally, they all came. The first 14 points that the Lakers scored came from two guys. We don't have anybody that can consistently, on a regular basis, put the ball in the hoop. Guys aren't as effective as as they should be, right? And it's basically LeBron James and Anthony Davis carrying a, a huge load for this team to even just be respectable. The Lakers went from a team that just won the in-season tournament, you know, went and were five games over 500 and looking great, looked like, okay, like, hey, man, we're about to catch, you know, the two seed at this rate. And since then, since they've won the in-season tournament, they've been terrible. I mean, terrible, terrible. And again, the defense has been fine. And I understand, like, some people might look at this and go, well, the defense can't be fine. Teams are shooting the lights out. Stuff. But you got to understand, the defense only holds up for so long when you can't score offensively, right? Like, you could have the most elite defense in the history of the game of basketball. And guess what? You're still, at times, going to, on a regular basis, when all you have is your defense, going to get broken down. And then you you basically lose the laps. When shots aren't falling, it's the energy gets low, guys stop hustling as hard, you, you're exhausted because you're working your tail off twice as hard on the defensive side because your offense isn't supplementing and offsetting the defensive lapses over the course of a game. Right When your defense is locked in, and you're able to provide the offense, it sparks more of the defense. Because now it's like, okay, like we're good. I mean, it's in all sports. You know, look at like football is another great example, right? You see defenses, defenses will be just absolutely elite. But if the offense doesn't have it going, they'll still lose the game. And it's like, they're, they're the best defense. Team. Well, yeah, their offense can't score. And that's what's going on with the Lakers. The Lakers cannot score the basketball. And it's becoming a huge problem. And it's why, you know, we need some type of trade. But speaking on Darvin Ham, let's talk about Darvin Ham. Because he was the one that was that was trending. You know, I understand the frustrations of Darvin Ham. I understand the frustrations of just his lack of rotations at times. His failure to utilize players, like I've talked about it with Rui Hachimura. I just think the way that he utilizes Rui is terrible. Um, Christian Wood is completely out of the rotation, but even when he is was in the rotation, I just don't like how they utilize him. Right? They're they're running Darvin Ham's running Christian Wood and Rui Hachimura as if they're three and D wings, and they're not. Right? They can hit the occasional three, right? Like, the whole point of getting Christian Wood was like, oh, man, he's a 6'10 guy that is an absolute mismatch down low. He can pick and pop. He can run the – he can knock it down from the mid-range. He can score around the rim. You could dump the ball to him at times, and he could just go get a bucket. Oh, and he's capable of shooting the three ball at a 38% clip. Not he shoots the three ball and he can – do these other things. No, like the, the whole point of him shooting the three ball was supposed to be just another just weapon in the arsenal rather than the main arsenal, right? Rather than the main weapon. 
And Darvin Ham just has just Christian Wood basically playing as a spot-up three-point shooter all game rather than putting him in a position to where he could be on the block and you could get him the basketball and let him go to work. Same thing with Rui, right? How many times do we just see Rui spot up in the, at the three-point line? That's not his game. Can he hit the occasional three? Sure, of course. But that's not his game. His game is that mid-range, that 15-footer, put him on the block, let him be that mismatch that he is. You know, he, he's just at the power forward position. He is such a mismatch for pretty much every power forward in the league. And yet we failed to utilize him in any real capacity. You know, like, I understand those frustrations. I understand that. But Darvin Ham isn't the sole issue, right? Like, I see a lot of people that act like, if we just got rid of Darvin Ham, that's it. The Lakers, that's it. The Lakers are a contender. No, 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 no. Darvin Ham is part of the problem. He has not been very good coaching at all. But he's not the main problem. You could go and fire Darvin Ham right this second and go and get a new coach, and nothing gets solved if guys can't score the basketball. Guys are getting out hustled. Guys are getting out played, right? Like, Darvin Ham isn't responsible for D'Angelo Russell scoring two points, having one rebound and two assists, and going one of six from the field. I mean, he's responsible for playing him 28 minutes. He shouldn't have been playing him 28 minutes. But, that's again, that's part of his problem, right? Darvin Ham isn't responsible for guys just missing defensive assignments and turning the ball over and giving up second-chance points. Like At some point, the players need to be held accountable as well. Again, this is a team issue, right? It doesn't matter who's coaching. You can go back, turn the clock back, and go get prime Phil Jackson. If nobody outside of LeBron James and Anthony Davis show up on a regular basis, then it doesn't matter. You're still not going to win games. You're just not. And that's a big problem, right? The Lakers need to address the urgency issue, the just energy issue, the hustle. We know they're capable of doing it. We saw it in the in-season tournament. We saw them go 7-0 and in that tournament and be able to show up on a regular basis and blow teams out and all kinds of stuff. I don't, I, like, I don't know where, why we go into the regular season and our focus just completely disappears, completely drops. We may end up being under 500 before this month is over, which is crazy. You know, two weeks ago, it looked like we may, like, hey, we just won the NCAA tournament. Let's go win an NBA championship. The Lakers need a trade. They need it. They have to go get a Zach Levine. I understand people have concerns about, you know, his contract and all that stuff. Like, what are we going to do? Are we just, we're just going to just, right off this season to just say, hey, we're, it's it's a wrap. The Lakers, if they trade for Zach Levine, would still have plenty of depth. You're not trading five rotation guys to go get Zach Levine. You're trading maybe two or three. You're basically consolidating your, rota- your, your depth to go get a guy in Zach Levine that can provide the scoring. The 40 million, it doesn't matter. The only thing that the 40 million would affect is just the tax that the Lakers have to pay. It's not like if they went and got... DeMar DeRozan, right? Like, all of a sudden, they have cap space. No. The Lakers would have, basically, their entire team locked up for the next three years anyway. And they're over the cap regardless. The the Lakers are hard capped this year. They only have, like, $3 million in, like, wiggle room that they they could spend. So, regard, like, going and getting that $40 million contract from Zach Levine... It's not going to change anything for the Lakers. It can change it in the positive, and you can make an argument, okay, well, it could also change it in the negative, which is true, but the Lakers are already in the negative. The Lakers are already bad, and most of these guys are all locked up long-term anyway. So you at some point, you got to roll the dice here a little bit. Go get the guy that can score the basketball, that can be your consistent go-to scorer, You know, Austin Reeves, look, Austin Reeves has done a great job, you know, being and scoring and putting the ball in the hoop. 
but he has to work so hard to do that. He's not a guy that can just go and just go get buckets naturally. He has to get into the teeth of the defense. He has to work twice as hard to just go get a bucket, right? Usually has to create contact, all that stuff. Zach Levine is just so hyper-athletic. He can apply rim pressure. He could shoot over the top. He's got the three-point shooting. He can play off the ball. You know, he's got, uh, he's like 44% on catch and shoot. Like the guy can do everything that the Lakers need. And then when Reeves goes and gives you say, you know, 20, guess what? You're probably winning most, if not all of those games, because it's going to be that much more impactful. Like, look at the Bulls game. Let's say you, let's say instead of D'Lo, Rui Hachimura and Gabe Vincent, you had Zach Levine, right? Because those are the three guys you're probably trading to get Zach Levine. You'd still be 10 guys deep, if not more. But just for this little thought process here, let's say instead of D against the Bulls, instead of D'Lo, Rui, and Gabe Vincent, you had Zach Levine. D'Lo, Rui, and Gabe Vincent combined gave you 10 points. Gave you seven rebounds and gave you six assists. Zach Levine, you don't think he would have given you more than 10 points? Even on a bad night, let's say he just had a terrible night against Chicago. You don't think he would have given you more than 10 points? Of course he would have. Even on a bad night, the guy will go give you 15. But if he gives you his average, you're talking 20 to 22 points, right? So there's 16 extra points. Now it's at least a tie game. He probably would have given you the same amount of rebounds or close to it, five rebounds. And then he probably would have given you five assists. He would have given you the same production, if not more, than all three of those guys, D'Lo, Rui, and Gabe Benson. The Lakers, they got to get off of D'Lo. I like D'Lo. I've been a defender of D'Lo. I think D'Lo in the right situation could be very good and very impactful. He just doesn't fit with this Lakers team because he can't play just solely the point guard, right? They they he needs to play off the ball more. He's he can't find he doesn't really have a definitive role carved out for him. It just and he can't defend the way that we need. Like if he was some like elite defensive guy, then yeah, it would be a lot easier. It'd be a lot better. But him and Austin Reeves are redundant. You're not trading Austin Reeves. You got to trade D'Lo. The Lakers got to figure this out. The Lakers got to get something done. The Lakers are an absolute mess. And they got to make a change. They got to make a trade. They do. They got to go get Zach Levine. I know people are concerned or people like, and I want DeMar too and all that stuff. We have no idea if they're going to trade DeMar DeRozan. The idea is for them, they want to keep DeMar, and DeMar has said two or three times that he wants to stay with the Bulls. One in the hand is worth two in the bush. Go get go get Zach Levine. Last thing you want to do is not trade for Zach Levine, and then they end up trading him elsewhere, and you think, okay, well, we'll just go get DeMar DeRozan, and then, they, and then DeMar DeRozan signs a new contract. Now what? Now what do you do? It's another wasted season. Got to go get Zach Levine. You do. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass the question on to you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? What are your thoughts? How do you feel? Let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. It helps me out a lot. Let's me know enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.